Welcome to the Roy Morgan quarterly update for the year covering the 12 months to December 2023. Shortly, I'll run through the new rankings in trust and distrust of brands in Australia, including the inaugural 2023 Most Trusted Agribusiness Awards, voted by Australia's farmers. But first, we have breaking news. I can reveal that in the full year, Woolworths has been unseated by Bunnings as Australia's most trusted brand. Why does trust matter? It matters because trust fortifies brand reputation, fostering customer loyalty and advocacy. It's much more than a corporate goal. It's the key to resilience and nimble decision-making in economic, social, political or health upheavals. Take Unilever. Unilever's former CEO points to the material impact of trust as a value driver within a business. In Unilever's case, 100 billion euros. In today's market where consumers are increasingly values driven, trust also represents a company's alignment with social and environmental concerns. So trust or reputation is not just an extraordinary asset. It's an indispensable component of a business's valuation and a key indicator of its potential for enduring success. But it's distrust that brings society's most profound fears and sense of betrayal to the surface. And it has a material impact. Consider Medibank. The health insurer saw a $1.6 billion dollars erased from its market value as distrust surged following its highly publicised data breach. Or Facebook, which after Cambridge Analytica data scandal lost $120 billion in market value, one of the biggest losses in corporate history. So how do we measure trust and distrust? Well, we're Roy Morgan, so as many of you know, we conduct a survey a continuous survey, and we're in our seventh year now of asking more than 2,000 Australians each and every month which brands they trust and which brands they distrust. So that's a sample size of more than 25,000 Australians each year. We also ask them why they trust or distrust their nominated brand, and we record exactly what they say in their own words. This research is open-ended and unprompted, And that means for people who nominate a brand, it's so top of mind that they put it ahead of all of the other brands swirling around in their consciousness. In summary, what we have here is so much deep qualitative data that it's quantifiable qualitative research. So let's get going. In this webinar, I'll reveal the winners and losers of the trust and distrust rankings, but first a look at how the 26 industry sectors compared. In the 12 months to December 23, supermarkets fell from the most trusted industry to second place. The fall from grace of supermarkets over the past few months is the largest fall of all 26 sectors tracked, and that allowed general retail to take the number one spot. Now let's look at the most trusted brands in Australia. As I mentioned earlier, Bunnings has regained top spot with Woolworths dropping to second place and Coles dropping to fifth. The decline of the big two supermarkets allowed Aldi to take third spot and Kmart to move up to fourth. The rest of the top 20 remained pretty stable. Notable changes were the ABC dropping two rankings and Bendigo Bank widening its gap on ING. Interestingly, SBS has plummeted in rankings falling 23 places to become Australia's 93rd most trusted brand. While this is dramatic, SBS remains the only commercial TV broadcaster with more trust than distrust. Insurance company QBE also plummeted, dropping 26 places to be the 128th most trusted brand. QBE has been accused of lifting premiums while simultaneously locking in so-called low ball pandemic payouts. The insurer is also facing the federal court for allegedly telling brokers to ignore a court ruling to contact clients to ask if they needed to lodge a claim for pandemic loss. So what's really happening with supermarkets and Bunnings? 
Woolworths Green and Coles in Red reveal how quickly distrust can gain momentum and negatively impact a brand's reputation. There's an old saying, an old Dutch saying, that trust arrives on foot but leaves on horseback. In other words, trust is slow to win but quick to lose. Bunnings community bias, demonstrable reputation for fair and equitable prices, brand strength and category dominance, seemingly all without hubris, all contribute to its reputational resilience. And the bad news for the supermarket giants doesn't stop there. Using our lead indicator, a three-month average net score, normally reserved exclusively for clients, I can reveal that Coles and Woolworths have both dropped from being the most trusted brands in Australia, plummeting deep into distrust territory, i.e. with more distrust than trust. On the other hand, Bunnings data paints an entirely different picture. This is a brand with a vast reservoir of goodwill and reputational strength, fed by dramatically more trust than distrust. In fact, its trust has been climbing steadily over the past year, while its minimal distrust remains fairly stable. So why do Australians love Bunnings? Bunnings has harnessed many of the foundational pillars of a trusted brand, including great customer service, communicating what it stands for and delivering it, being an active part of the community, solving customers' problems, and expertise and product knowledge. This is what Australians tell us in their own words, putting Bunnings in a very strong position to keep the coveted title of Australia's most trusted brand during 2024. Bunnings actually took the lead as early as September last year, with Aldi and Kmart both well ahead of Coles and Woolworths. We'll see all this play out in stark reality at our next quarterly webinar. So that's trust. But what's happening with the most distrusted brands? Optus is headlining Australia's most distrusted brands. The telco's huge level of distrust is hanging on following its catastrophic customer data breach back in September 2022. We're often asked at Roy Morgan what the recovery time is after a major brand shock like data hacks or Royal Commission findings. And Optus is providing clues. We're at 15 months and counting. Facebook at number two is the beneficiary of Optus remaining so distrusted. Winners or improvers in the top 20 most distrusted brands are Google, improving seven places, BP, improving two places, Uber, jumped eight places, and Chinese technology company Huawei, while remaining more distrusted than trusted, improved 11 rankings. So who were the losers? Who do we distrust even more now? During 2023, the big four banks were showing significant improvements in their trust and distrust scores. But by year's end, we saw dramatic declines. ANZ is the biggest loser, jumping 18 distrust rankings to land at number 15 on the top 20 list of most distrusted brands in Australia. NAB jumped 19 places, but as the nation's 71st most distrusted brand, it's in much better shape than ANZ. PwC is recovering faster than Optus, and Qantas, while still deeply distrusted, is showing green shoots of recovery. So what's the outlook for the coming business year? I think the most worrying message for 2024 is that Australians are more distrusting than at any other time in the past five years. Before COVID, we all felt more trusting, but soaring distrust from executives behaving appallingly and even corruptly has brought the entire economy into net distrust territory. That's the black line. The moral blindness exhibited by leaders at Qantas, Harvey Norman, PwC, AMP, Rio Tinto and QBE has contributed to a kind of national fragility. Australians are now more distrusting than trusting, and that's a national problem. So it comes as no surprise that the top three reasons why Australians distrust brands are their huge profits, not putting customers first, and price gouging. 
and all three have risen sharply during the current cost of living crisis. What's remarkable is that while business leaders immediately recognised COVID as a crisis, many failed to recognise inflation, rate increases and cost of living pressures as a full-blown social and economic crisis. And those leaders and their brands are now paying the price with soaring distrust and dramatic brand damage. The two industry sectors in the glare of Australians for being too motivated by profit are banks and supermarkets. Over time, the huge profit announcements by big banks have largely gone unremarked, after all they're banks, so there's no surprise there. But in the era of seemingly endless mortgage rate increases and cost of living pressures, Australians are outraged that banks are making huge profits at their expense. The same goes for supermarkets, but it's banks that are really in the firing line for their profit hubris. When it comes then to rip off prices or price gouging, it's the supermarkets that are under the hammer. Interestingly, Australians don't blame banks as much as supermarkets for unaffordability and price hikes. So while they don't like all those mortgage increases, they hate the bank's triumphal profit announcements even more. This graph shows privacy as a reason for trust or distrust. And there on the right-hand side is the direct correlation between data privacy breaches and Australians becoming more distrusting, becoming a more fragile nation. Unsurprisingly, data privacy concerns as a reason for distrust also went through the roof after the Optus data breach. That's the dark blue line. Interestingly, private health insurance went up after the Medibank data breach, the light blue line, but nowhere near as much as the telecommunications on the back of the Optus breach. For brands needing to rebuild trust or decrease distrust over the coming year, here are the top seven steps to take. First, Embrace responsiveness and problem solving. JB Hi-Fi has a frictionless returns policy and Unisuper solves member problems quickly and seamlessly. Second is to build your environmental credentials and who better than Patagonia whose mission statement is we're in business to save our home planet. And Keep Cup who single-handedly raised awareness about the environmental impact of single-use containers. Next is to adopt a community bias. Bendigo Bank is built on its community roots and partners with communities to keep a bank in tiny towns. While Who Gives a Crap donates 50% of its profits to help build toilets and improve sanitation in developing countries. Fourth is to demonstrate a high level of skills and product knowledge. And who better than Bunnings as our exemplar for this trust step on the ladder to success? and Atlassian, whose university delivers educational resources and best practice training to all users. Next is to practice clear and consistent communication, what I like to call telling the truth simply. Canva, for example, provides consistent, engaging content that simplifies design for its users. And the Commonwealth Bank stands out for its clear and consistent communication, particularly in demystifying banking and financial services for its customers. Sixth is to adopt what the CEO of Red Energy calls the decency principle. And Aussie Broadband joins Red Energy in delivering it every day. Both companies make decisions as if they were making them for their grandmother or their daughter or their brother. It's all about simple decency. And finally, you need to invest in protecting and respecting privacy. As we saw earlier, this has never been more important. Both Apple and PayPal set the tone and the pace for this crucial step on the road to being a trusted brand. And now to the inaugural Roy Morgan Most Trusted Agribusiness Awards. For this section of our webinar, we'll focus on farmers, the true backbone of this wide brown land. Where would we be without them? Here at Roy Morgan, we conduct regular surveys among farmers and our special agribusiness panel includes 30,000 farmers, from dairy farmers to cropping farmers, farmers on vast properties to hobby farmers and everything in between. Recently, 
we conducted an additional survey of more than a thousand Australian farmers to identify which agribusiness brands they trust and which they distrust, and much more. The brands that record the highest net trust score in each category win the award for that category, and the brand with the highest net trust score across all categories wins the best of the best agribusiness brand award. More than 50 brands are competing in nine categories, including the best of the best. Now to our first category, animal health. The contenders are Ag and Vet, Pastoral Ag and Zoetis. And the winner is Zoetis. It's one of the world's largest animal health companies and supplies vet and livestock producers across Australia. The next award is for Australia's most trusted agribusiness, Bank. And the winner is Bendigo Bank, famous for serving the community. Bendigo Bank goes beyond the capital and regional cities and deep into Australia's rural community. Next is the award for the nation's most trusted chemical and fertiliser brand. The finalists are Bayer, Incitec Pivot and New Farm. And the winner is Incitec Pivot, a leading fertiliser manufacturer and distributor on the east coast of Australia. Incitec Pivot is on a journey to become the nation's leading soil health business. Next is Australia's most trusted farmers co-op. And the finalists are Norco, Fonterra and CBH Group. And the winner is Norco. Established in Byron Bay in 1895, Norco is a 100% Australian farmer-owned dairy cooperative of 190 dairy farms in northern New South Wales and southeast Queensland. Next is Australia's most trusted grain company, and the finalists are AWB, CBH Group and Grain Corp. And the winner is Grain Corp, serving more than 350 customers in over 50 countries. Grain Corp originates grain from Australia, Canada, the UK and Ukraine and connects directly with customers through offices in North, South and Southeast Asia. Our next award is for Australia's most trusted industry group and the finalists are Dairy Australia and the MLA. And the winner is the MLA. Meat and Livestock Australia is the industry marketing and research body for Australia's red meat industry. The next award is for the most trusted stock feed brand in Australia. The finalists are Lorkey, Mills, Ridley and Coprice. And the winner is Ridley. With more than 70 years of experience in Australia, Ridley's animal and livestock brands are household names on farms and to animal lovers. Our final award is for Australia's most trusted agribusiness products and services brand. The finalists are Elders, Nutrien Ag Solutions and CRT. And the winner is Elders. While its historic roots are in agriculture, today Elders' diverse business operations cover rural services, real estate, insurance and much more. And that brings us to the big one, the best of the best award. In other words, Australia's most trusted agribusiness brand. And the winner is, yes, you guessed it, Elders. For 185 years, Elders has been embedded in the fabric of Australian agriculture and has played a key role in rural and regional communities by employing local people, servicing local farming families. Congratulations, Elders, for being the nation's most trusted agribusiness brand. The first and highest ranking reason Australians trust Elders is strong customer relationships. Second, good customer service. Third, Elders has friendly, experienced and knowledgeable staff. And fourth, Elders is well-established and long-standing. And finally, Australians trust Elders because it has reliable products and services. Put these things together and you've got a winning formula. And finally, in further breaking news, we at Roy Morgan are about to embark on a new ag tech and media survey that you can participate in. Roy Morgan's next survey will ask farmers which ag tech products they use or intend to use, what barriers they have to adopting new technologies, what benefits they get from new tech, what media influences their attitudes and buying behaviour. 
how they feel about their business expectations, and what are their biggest challenges. If you'd like us to ask additional questions relevant to your business, just ask Roy Morgan. And that's a wrap for this hybrid webinar. I look forward to sharing Roy Morgan insights with you again soon. Keep an eye out for your next invitation. Thanks for joining in.